I'm excited to announce this episode's Lainey's Little Bug as Olivia Nash. Hi, I'm Olivia Nash. I am 12 years old. I live in California and I've been twirling since I was three. Awesome. I'm so excited to have you here today. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, I'm so glad. All right. I have a few questions so that I can get to know you a little bit better. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Let's get started. All right, Olivia. So my first question for you is what is inside your baton bag? Okay, so I mostly have my smelly shoes, of course, in my batons, but I also have a JoJo bone handy just in case, like, I ever put a bow in my hair. And then I have chapstick, just in case. <laughs> of course. And then I have uh, three sweat towels. Uh, one is from Savannah Miller from 2014 to 2018. And then I have... Uh, my dad's old world team um, sweat towel um, from 1994 and then I also have um, my dad's uh, towel that says Sparky Nash on it and Sparky was his nickname when he was twirling and um, now I use it also. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Now which of those three towels do you consider the luckiest? Uh, probably the Sparky towel. <laughs> Do you use that one at competitions? Mm -hmm. And it brings you good luck? Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> All right, Olivia, are you ready for question number two? Sure. <laughs> All right. Who do you consider your biggest role model? Um, I'd say my dad, definitely. He's uh, a world champion. Uh, Renee Thorne, uh, Dale White. And like current twirlers, that you definitely. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Savannah, uh, Savannah Miller, Lexi Duda, Ali Duda, Sabrina Smith, and my little sister Juliana. Oh, that's so sweet. Those are all incredible role models, though. Of course, your dad, Mr. Mark Nash, has been a super incredible role model of mine as well. So. It's really cool that you get to have him in your everyday life as dad. <laughs> now, I would like to know what your favorite twirling trick is. My favorite twirling trick is a one spin double because it pushes me to twirl faster. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's a great trick because it's a great skill builder. I feel like once you can do a one double, jumping up to a triple, isn't that much harder. I mean, trust me, it's a challenge, but if you can get around for a spin double, I think you can do a triple pretty soon. All right, so now that we've figured out what your favorite twirling trick is, I would like to find out what your favorite twirling event is. I would have to say Tubaton because that was also what I competed with in Norway at the World Championships for MBTA. And it was, it's like one of my favorite things to do. Uh, I'd like to see what things are like to, that I'm able to do with the baton. I'd also have to say freestyle because it helps me. Um, I also want to be an actress when I grow up. And uh, in freestyle, you can act a little bit and you can kind of do your own thing. Freestyle is one of my favorites as well. But I think it's really cool that you chose two baton because very rarely do you hear kids choose two baton as their favorite. It's definitely the most challenging event. So I think it's really impressive that you chose that as your favorite. And it was really fun to get to share the MBTA World's experience with you in Tubaton as I also competed in Tubaton at that World Championships. And that was really fun. Now that we discovered what your favorite twirling trick is and your favorite twirling event is, I want to know what your favorite twirling memory is. I have to say winning the bronze medal at the world championships because I thought I would be like out of uh, the high, uh, top five placements uh, after they had announced fourth and fifth. And then they announced my name for third and I was like really excited and it was like, just a huge surprise. I remember that moment actually since I was there. I was looking up at the stands at your parents 
And I remember seeing how happy and excited they got and how happy you were. You actually walked past me to walk up to the uh, podium and the smile from ear to ear was like, just warmed my heart and I absolutely loved it. It was a great memory for sure. Yeah. So I know you spend a lot of your time twirling baton, but what activities do you do outside of baton twirling? I am an actor, so I do theater. Um, I also am a dancer, and I also sing. Oh, you sing? I love that. I actually recently watched a YouTube video of yours doing a cover of a song. I absolutely love that. It was so cute. Mm -hmm. And as far as acting goes, I absolutely love that. I think acting is super duper duper impressive. And when I was in middle school, I was a part of my theater club, so I did the plays in middle school as well, and that was so much fun. So I'm really glad you get to do that. I feel like a lot of twirlers spend 90% of their time twirling and don't really have a lot of time to do other stuff, so I think it's really cool that you get to do theater and have fun with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this next question is a little bit of a hard one, but if you could change anything about our sport, what would you change? I would probably decide to have all the federations put together because I don't understand why they'd have to be separate. I mean, we love the same sport. We have many similarities, and then we just look at the differences. I think we should look more at the similarities. I totally agree with that. I think it'd be a great idea for us to just come together and merge as one big happy family. I think um, it would help us expand our sport as well. I think us being separated into two different organizations and, well, many more than just two, but I think being separated like that makes it hard for us to expose the sport a little bit. And I think it'll be easier for the whole world to find out what baton twirling is once we're uh, together as one family, you know? Mm -hmm. All right, so we obviously know you twirl baton, and you just told us you like to sing, dance, and act, but besides all of that, what do you like to do when you have nothing else to do? Well, I love to play with my dog. Sadie, I love to play with my dogs. I love them so much. And I actually got Sadie for my birthday one year, and she was all I wanted. I just wanted a puppy. And um, I also like to jump on my trampoline with my sister. Uh, I like to play with my friend Sophia and my sister. Uh, and I like to watch the TV show Stranger Things on Netflix. Those are all pretty cool hobbies. It looks like you absolutely love your dogs. Mm -hmm. I have two dogs of my own, and I absolutely love spending time with them. I like to curl up on our couch by the fire and watch a little movie with them sitting on my lap and cuddling. It's just the most fun thing ever. Yeah. We know you've accomplished so much already in your baton twirling career, but what are your future baton twirling goals? I definitely want to win the gold medal in USTA and MBTA, and I also want to become Miss Major of America. I think those are some incredible dreams. I have spent my entire life working for some of those, mm -hmm. um, and I've been fortunate enough for many of the, actually all of my biggest dreams to have come true so far, so I know that if you work hard, you'll be able to achieve anything for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Olivia, my last question for you is what do you want to do when you grow up? Um, I want to be a famous actress in movies and TV shows, and I also love to sing and dance, so I'm hoping I can, and baton twirl, of course, and I'm hoping I can incorporate those into my acting. That's amazing. And I think because you live in California, I think you ha you're going to have so many incredible opportunities for auditions, for TV shows and movies, and opportunities to be in music videos and all of that fun stuff. So I really hope that happens. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> all right, Olivia. So for this bonus question, I want to find out what the funniest thing that has ever happened to you is. Okay, so we're in Hollywood, and we're, like, on the, like, Walk of Fame, 
and we're driving, like trying to find a parking spot. <laughs> and uh, my dad goes, oh my gosh, look, it's Taylor Swift on the side of the road. And we're all like looking, we're all like, oh my gosh, wait, what, it's Taylor Swift? And um, so we pull over, my dad's like, I swear, get out, go, like find her. Like this is like an opportunity. And so he pulls over. We all like walk out, and we, as we're walking towards her, we're like, "This is not Taylor Swift. This isn't her. Like this, she doesn't know." <laughs> and so we we like get to her, and my sister and I, I'm like eight, and my sister's like six, and so my mom's like praying. She's like, "Oh my gosh, don't say anything, kids, about this not being Taylor Swift." And she's like, "This girl, she totally like." Like, from far, I guess, she would look like Taylor Swift because she has a guitar, and she, like, has, like, the curly hair and whatever, but, um, like, close up her face, it's, it's not Taylor Swift. So it was really funny, and when we came back, we, we were, like, wanting an autograph and stuff. We came back in the car, we told my dad, we're like, that, that wasn't Taylor Swift, and he was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. It was That's great. so funny. <laughs> this one time I was in 7-Eleven and this guy came up to me and asked me for a picture. He was like, you're from Game of Thrones. And I was like, no. <laughs> he thought I was like one of the main characters in Game of Thrones. I mean, I've watched Game of Thrones briefly, but I don't know the names of any of the characters or anything. And he thought 1,010% that I was the little girl from Game of Thrones. <laughs> I don't know why. I was in sweatpants and a sweatshirt, like bumming. To the max, it was like a Wednesday night. I had just gotten home from dance or something. <laughs> like I was like not looking good at all. I'm not for sure I was this famous actor. <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's like um, we went to Six Flags and um, somebody recognized my dad from YouTube, and they were like, oh my gosh, you're that like baton twirler. And then she like literally like gets on the floor and starts like bowing down to him. <laughs> so funny oh my gosh that's crazy i would have been like so like embarrassed i don't know <laughs> i don't know how i would have reacted <laughs> all right olivia what's it like having mark nash as a dad well it goes two ways one way is it's very fun he can always give me advice um he knows how to like help me out because he was once me um, but it's also hard because people expect a lot from the daughter of Mark Nash. Um, they expect me to be as good as him, but they don't really understand that everybody starts from scratch. They need to all learn like the same way to do the ton. So it really goes two ways. Um, but my dad is amazing, and I love having him as a dad. That's incredible. I think it's really cool that you get to have him as a father and have him influence everything and really be a role model in your life. And since he was such a legendary and iconic baton twirler, like he can give you so many great pieces of advice and I think help you in ways that other people might not have been able to. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so you mentioned starting up your acting and singing career. Can you um, tell us a little bit about what you've been doing? Well, I do have a theater um, elective in my school, and we're working on the Peter Pan Jr. play, and we just got casted, and I am Tinkerbell and a pirate. So that's, like, really fun for me, and um, Tinkerbell also has, like, singing, um, like, solos and things in throughout the play so that's like a big part to help me out through this um and also i've started a youtube channel and um my friend and i love to sing and uh we've been doing things like covers of certain songs um singing those and dancing and um that's like really fun to film also and that also really helps me to like kind of push me i guess towards um more of my dream um I'm also signed with a talent agency, um, which uh, whenever they have like an audition um, that uh, like fits someone like me, that they need someone like, let's say with blue eyes like me, um, then they would tell me where I need to go for the audition and I would go there and then if they're like, they want me for the like callbacks or whatever they need, then they would call me back and then the talent agency, like through that they can 
let me know what I need to do. Yeah, and book you for jobs. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Do you like going on auditions? I do. It's really fun, and I love L.A., uh, and it's really fun to, like, drive down there all the time, and, like, I just love it there. It's just really fun. <laughs> auditions are really fun to me. Um, I'm also signed with the talent agency. I feel like nobody really knows that about me, but, um, <laughs> and I get, like, sent out on auditions all the time, but I'm, I never really, like, oh, no, I've gotten really close to, like, a couple of movie parts and stuff like main roles in movies like I got like down to like the top five once which I was like jumping for joy with but they ended up not choosing me which happens a lot you just kind of get used to it but I don't know there's something about auditions that's really fun for me I think um it kind of pushes you to be to go outside of your comfort zone I mean trying to play a role um like play a part of a character that normally is something you wouldn't do on a daily basis um is really fun and different. I think you like getting to put yourself in somebody else's shoes is unique for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Thank you so much for watching. It was an honor for me to be this month's Lainey's Little Bug. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. And I will be linking Olivia's YouTube channel in the description down below. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. Thank you, Lee. Bye. Bye.